Hey everybody, we're back. <laughs> Did you miss us? We're back. So uh, I have uh, with me here my good pals Ralph Wood and Scott Furt Wangler. I'm Roger Pugh. We are in the band Crank. I'm in the band DNA Vibrators. Ralph's an honorary member of DNA Vibrators. Scott will be in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> um, so we had a part one uh, of whatever we're doing here tonight. That if you watched last week, then or any time in the last few days, then uh, and and a few people have, uh, then then you know where we left off. And Scott was like. Hey, we we got some other things that we need to talk about, and I think I owe him money. So if it devolves into something <laughs> like that, just just ride it out with us. Uh, but uh, uh, Scott, I know you had some questions that you wanted to kind of pose, so people could kind of hear some different perspectives on some of the things we do. So I'm going to hand it yeah, over to you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, and and uh, first, let me say Happy Father's Day to each of you. Ah, yeah. Uh, hope you had a great day so I far know, i know roger was late because <laughs> he was spending time with one of his kids god yeah <laughs> i look forward to seeing the uh ralph and harmony uh father daughter picture which was pretty awesome yeah, yeah that was yeah, cool was a... very cool i had that t-shirt kind of stuck in a bag and it only comes out <laughs> <in Father's Day. laughs> <laughs> totally disintegrating with uh... that's yeah, awesome that's though cool. that's cool i yeah. see she has, she has upgraded her shirt though she has yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we found her another one so that's good so yeah we we uh last time we we last met um i thought we were i just felt like we were just getting started and i know you know in a week we're going to be able to continue this long conversation and just get creative and stuff. But uh, while I have you, and and I thought, well, I had a chance to just get this in, uh, get this recorded for perpetuity. Um, you you both know that um, one of the areas I research is creativity, and um, I am always interested in kind of probing you know what people do what artists do what scientists do to uh to to um dig through ideas to see them come to fruition or not and and so one of my questions to both of you and dave too hopefully he can join us was you know when when you come to a song or it doesn't even have to be a song it can be a project or anything but you know since we're talking about crank um you know if if a song is brought to the table you know what what do you what how do you see that uh in terms of what you're going to do as for Roger as a bass player or a vocalist or or Ralph as a drummer, um, I'm I'm always curious about that uh, and want to get your thoughts on how you approach that. If it's it could be very simple, might not be. I don't know. I have no idea. So I wanted to kind of pick your brains about that. So okay. we're like. We're like part of your professional research obligation here, Scott. <laughs> you, you are you are a participant Damn. at this point, yes. Okay. And, and, and I'll get you the paperwork. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> did we get to like like if we answer correctly, do we get like an Amazon gift card or some shit oh, like that? Oh, something, something. Very cool, right? Yeah. It'll be, in a, be... In, a, in a raffle. It'll be a raffle. <laughs> yeah, of course. You can't give them to everybody. I mean, that's yeah, just yeah. that's just not feasible. It's a waste of money. Yeah. Uh, Ralph, do you want to go first, or you want me to go first? It, it doesn't matter. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been interesting um, for me listening to the Crank songs again, practicing the Crank songs again. Um, I mean, I can remember when when we would record and we would come up with a song. I mean, my 
my my approach and i had a friend who was a drummer was like there was a write-up once that said it was like the way i played was like charlie watts and he's like aren't you offended and i was like i don't know charlie watts a pretty good fucking drummer in a big band but i think what he meant was my approach to the crank songs were always to stay out of the way of everything else and to keep the momentum of the song moving forward so i mean there there are fills in some of the crank songs but a lot of it is just regardless of what the time signature is is just pounding 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 and driving ahead with the beat um and i don't i mean at that point i guess in my drumming career or whatever i mean that was one of the things that i could do and i thought that i could do well um and that was always my approach to most of our songs but then there's some like uh scott and i went to see sonic youth and uh one of the things i always remembered about their drummer is that i mean it's complete fucking chaos but he always held the beat down when there was noise and distortion and and everybody else was improvising the drums were always kind of the one constant and that was always kind of my approach from after seeing them was like when all of this sucks back together it's going to come back in line with that drum beat and that's where i need to be there and that's what's going to make like a really great contrast from noise and distortion and chaos when it sucks back in it's just that driving we're driving again with the guitars and with the bass so i mean i think his name is steve shelley now he was an important part in the way that i would approach our song sim kane from the rollins band with some of the tom stuff like on staring and stop and stuff like that was lifted from some of the stuff that was on the rollins bound albums um and then um, most recently, I've been working on in in my or uh, yeah, it's inside my shell, and that's all um, Murph from Dinosaur Junior. Because that's a little bit I don't want to call it we did poppy or, or that, but so I can look at the songs that we did, and it's like okay, well this is I'm gonna pull something in from this drummer. Fail to see is more Matt Cameron from Soundgarden. Um, so is um uh oh damn it i'm drawing a blank now anyway it'll come to me but anyway so creativity with 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 our songs i mean that's where a lot of that comes I mean, i'm listening i'm like well i wonder why i didn't do a fill there and it's like well no what it really needed is just like this constant driving split your head apart drum drum part um, hey, sorry, <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Hi, Dave. You have, you have audio. You're probably not going to get video. Okay. Wow, what a clusterfuck that was. I don't know what. I don't know why. But. <laughs> well, we're we're glad that you're here, buddy. So, uh, or 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 to quote uh, 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 Chris uh, Professor Whitman's lollipop shop. Um, does this thing where there's another like a promo spot that some other gal does and it's and it's like i i don't even know what the music is but it's sort of like hey there and uh so <laughs> so that's a spot that comes along on this guy's show so this was our hey there moment hey there <laughs> like we're like right on top of that <laughs> And, and the and, worst and, part of it is now I do that too. <laughs> and, and I'm also and, transferring it to other other DBX DJs <laughs> promo spots. <laughs> Hello everybody. Hey everybody. You know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, glad to join you finally. Glad I don't you're know. Here. I have no idea what the hell that was all about, but Well, glad glad that you made it. Uh, Ralph was talking about process and Scott asked a couple of questions here. I think it is fucking fitting because, hey there, that's a guitar solo right there. It's like in songs, it's like, that's what a guitar solo is. It's just, hey there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so perfect, perfect timing. 
concur with that. So I was, uh, Ralph was just uh, responding to a question I had about, you know, when uh, we're, we're working on a song, crank song, um, you know, how do you approach it from your particular instrument and sensibility? Uh, and it was, it was, it's, it's, it's really interesting to hear it because we've never really talked about it mm -hmm. that much, uh, as, as a band, we just go in and do it and we've been, well, yeah. it, never <laughs> really discussed it. So it's, it's great getting kind of, I, I mentioned, you know, that's my, one of my research areas is creativity. So I'm very interested in how people approach it. So Ralph, I don't know if you're finished. Uh, cause I, I did ask, uh, you know, what, what song might exemplify that. And I don't know how Roger wants to incorporate the songs. Uh, but if, you know, if you want to continue with your thought and tell, tell us about a song that you, uh, you know, might exemplify that approach. Uh, real, real quick. I'm just going to butt in. This particular session is going to end in about nine and a half minutes. So I'm getting a notation that that's, Sorry, what, guys. that's, that's the shit. That's okay. What we're going to do at that point is it'll stop and I'm going to open the meeting back up and just everybody join back in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. That'll probably take <laughs> about the same amount of time. Maybe well, actually get on in the I'm, first place. I'm, I'm just telling you that's how it is. So let's yeah, continue. That's then. all good. All right. I mean, I think, I think a song, something early on that we did that kind of exemplifies that is like motivation right the 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 drums the drum beat nothing fancy but it's just jackhammer in your face in your face and it it moves around like uh whatever the anti-guitar solo is like i had to count the measures of that so i could come out of one into the other mm -hmm. but the drum beat is just is just pounding it's just keeping time and I think my friend uh, who, you know, asked about the Charlie Watts comment and all that, it's like, you know, he plays, I think he's playing in a country rock band now, played in cover bands and stuff and would twirl his drumsticks and shit like that. And it was like, well, that's, that's not, that's not what I'm there for, right? It's like motivation is this driving song with the weird fucking guitar noise and all of that. And it's, Everything when that song sucks back together, it's because it's got a reliable, steady, firm drum beat that's there, and everything kind of builds off of that. Like I didn't need to do anything else because that's what the song kind of needed. Um, so, so Ralph, since you've mentioned motivation, let's just put that in our little memory block over here. That when when we get our break after here in the next couple of minutes we'll cue that up and, and we'll give that a listen and pay attention for that. And people can be like, Oh, that's what he was talking about. I got you. Yeah. So I'll, I'm, I'm just making a note to myself. Motivation is going to be one of our choices. So, all right, cool. cool. Awesome. But otherwise, I mean, when somebody brings in an original song, I kind of scroll through my head, like what drummer, what, what style of drumming is going to fit this? And other bands that I've played in, it's it's required something else, you know. Maybe it's more like a Keith Moon approach, a bouncy Keith Moon would bounce through stuff, you know, or it's a, a Ringo approach, or it's some other drummer. But I think, you know, you all draw from everybody draws from other musicians, and you know, that's kind of in addition to your own own style, you look at how other people play and it's like well, what can I bring in from this or what can I bring in from that? Um, and Dave Grohl's drumming from when he was in Nirvana is very different than how he drums for the Foo Fighters. I mean, they're complimentary, but, um, you know, there's definitely some Dave Grohl sorts of things in what we did, particularly like on Catherine or, um, I don't know, I'd have to look through Symbol especially. Mm-hmm is a is a nirvana kind of approach to that so um yeah. so anyway Great. that's it for drum parts songwriting you know different different thing i do different things for that but 
but definitely for Drummond and particularly with us, that's what it always was, was to keep the song, you know, just beating you between the fucking eyes as much as we could, because that's part of what we were about yeah. was hurting people. So um, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to, you know, I, I, I thought that was my part to play. So yeah, you uh, did it rather well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah the that the uh, those that symbol ear damage uh you know on one side and me <laughs> leaning over in front of the amplifier on the other side my ears are fucked <laughs> I, I was about to get rid of i'm gonna bring it with with me i have this really oh, sorry high... i didn't I didn't what dave <laughs> dave <laughs> no I was about to get rid of this brass snare drum I had because it's too fucking loud for what I play now. And then we we were gonna get back together, and I was like, "Not yet." I'm <laughs> I can't get rid of this yet. This is the scene. It's, it's a scene. It's a, I mean, it's a beautiful snare drum, but it is it is loud as fuck. But it'll, that's great. It's a good fit for what we do. Um, yeah, it'll hurt people in PKs. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, audio is kind of clippy on my end but uh i the laughter tells me everything i need to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah we don't kill them with kindness we kill them with loudness yeah, yeah. we just kill them <laughs> <laughs> so so dave or roger do you want to to follow that uh yeah i, I will um yeah, start, so... with, start with raj because i my notepad that i which is very has very few notes on it but it's downstairs and i gotta come back up here my okay hey um, we're, we will I'll, probably I'll raj we will probably be taking a break in a, in three minutes so it'll be cool if you do that now anyway because we will be stopping and then restarting so we'll do part three here right after this is is that going to be a new link or just it should be it should be the same link i'm just we're just going to reopen it and it should be all right cool do you want to stop now raj and uh no let's let's milk this three minutes for all we can and dave can go get whatever <laughs> notes he needs so yeah well the the, the they ain't much but the they're it's shorthand <laughs> so what i would say is that i've i've recently gained um a a different perspective on my my role in the creative process whether it's from playing bass or writing music or the production component of it and it's come primarily and i'll bet ralph has a similar um, um experience here too it's come primarily from playing in a cover band uh my role is very different in the band the cover band and we're a small cover band we're a three piece so that means at at every moment everybody has to be doing the maximal thing that this, that doesn't mean the most stuff but the thing that's going to maximize the sonic impression that you leave and so sometimes that's not playing at all. Sometimes it's doing something else. Sometimes it's doing what you're doing and duplicating another part that was in the song that normally wasn't played by your instrument. But if you give the impression of it being there, then people will fill the rest of it in in their head. So you can still play a fairly well or large orchestrated piece by just playing a simple component of whatever that counter melody was or something like that. And that's something that I can do on the bass. A guitar player can do it. Uh, and even to a point, the drummer can do it because there's some there's melodic components, there's vocal components and other stuff that everybody can add. And so that really kind of changed my whole perspective on you know what's the purpose what am i doing and what's the creative element that's happening because even though what we're doing is recreation in the cover band it's still creation it's recreation and creation and the same is true for us if we're playing our own composition when we're out doing it live it's still a recreation and so what we're trying to do is still present that image of whatever it is sonic image of whatever it is and it's going to be different every time we do it uh, although i would say with crank the way we drilled that shit there was less variation around the edges than there would have been in other bands but that definitely changed the, my perspective on what i'm doing here it's like that we appreciate 
the the elements of silence that occur and we build on each other's ability to add those extra bits in there uh, so that the guitar player knows that if he's going off on a lead that I am putting an extra string down so we have the element that is like the chord that he would have played mm -hmm. and so we can still fill it in so it's more than just it, it, it still maintains that illusion that that other guitar was there or whatever that might be. So that's the first part of my answer, and now's a good point for us to stop. So I'm going to close this real quick, and then I'm going to reopen it back, and then just join in and, as soon and, as you can using the same link. And when we come back, I want to I have a follow up on on that. All right, I'm going to close it down, and I'll see you guys back in just a few moments. Okay, awesome.